is John Gentry with OpenX. I'm here today with Dan Walsh from BuzzFeed talking about BuzzFeed, where, it's going, where they're going as a company and some of their content strategies and also what they're doing in programmatic advertising. Can you talk a little bit about kind of the BuzzFeed content strategy, how it's evolved, yep. what makes you guys so different in the space? BuzzFeed forever has been a content business, right? And even before it was a business, it was about building great content that users love. Over the last year, we've started taking new strides to develop more and more opportunities, right? Um, it's always going to be core to us that we have this content offering, but we start to think about how can that translate into something like programmatic? How could that go into more media products? So programmatic seemed like a great fit, and you know it was a time where header bidding had really started to expand, and our scale was just bigger than ever. Um, so we decided to launch into programmatic, and it's been almost a year now. With the diversity of content, the unique content you have, yep. how do you think about that from an ad formats strategy? We're obsessed with that. We are constantly looking to see how can we tie that gap or merge that gap between programmatic and native in a way that's just you know special to us and unique to BuzzFeed. Our clients have so much video and so many things that they want to do with that, um, but that's not really native to the internet in so many places. Yep. And one of the things that we recognized right away was that there should be an opportunity to make our clients' videos seem more of a fit for social, more of a fit for the web. So we developed a product that we call Buzz Cuts, and we actually will We'll work with our clients with some of their trailers or commercials to just make it feel built more for social. That could be adding a meme bar, some animations, and we'll run that unit throughout our universe. Have you found brands have been pretty excited and positive about kind of the modifications you can make and how you can better represent them in your environment? Or have yeah. you found some that have been uptight about it? People now are, are just really getting used to it. So we have a lot of renewals on it. The viewability is really strong on it. Completion rates are high on these. It's been a pretty strong response and we're happy about that. And you know, now we're opening that up programmatically. So we can actually, you know, for folks that allow us to work with custom assets and different things, we're able to give them those files and let them go target their audiences. You have been programmatic for less than a year. Yeah. In terms of the learning curve, right? Yeah. There's there's still lots of publishers out there that are at various spaces of the learning curve. What yeah. if what have you found has either been one of the most interesting learnings, one of the toughest things to figure out, the execution challenges? Yeah. What's what's been tough for you on that front? Um, the acronyms. There yeah, you go. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. like I said, we've been a we've been a content business forever, and to now s switch gears um, and be able to start to focus in different areas, it, it's not something that just happens overnight. One of the funniest things ever. I we had just launched it and one of the sellers came up to me and she's like, Dan, I sold a programmatic. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's awesome. And I was like, wait a minute, what did you just say? She's like, oh, yeah, I, I sold a programmatic. And I was like, oh no. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like what? Education what, time. Yeah, yeah, education time. Yeah. I know you've been hitting the gas in terms of expansion. Yep. Would love to hear some more about kind of what dimensions or what, what, what vectors you're taking in terms of your expansion. I would say over the last probably six to seven months, we've done a couple of things. One, we're investing in the team. So we've hired folks that can go out and speak the language of programmatic. The other thing that we're doing internally is we're building our own brands. So we're building things like Tasty. Uh, we're building things like Nifty, which is our home brand, and As Is, which is our beauty brand, and things like BuzzFeed News that have been around forever, but we're giving them domains, and we're giving them their own places and their own identity. What we want to do is expand that programmatic offering across all of them. So making a very seamless way for our advertisers to transact, and if you're looking for a desired audience, um, I want to give you one place where you can hit all those domains at the same time. So if you're looking for the food audience, you don't have to just run on Tasty, yeah. right? People are engaging with, you know, um, the food lovers are engaging across all of our sites. There was one other thing you mentioned to me. I think, was it BFX? Yep. Is that, it's BuzzFeed Exchange? BFX is um, is our term for grouping this all together. So like I said, when we mentioned, when we started, we were just BuzzFeed.com, um, 1 billion impressions globally. Um, now we're up to 3 billion, and we have seven unique .coms um, and two apps. So we're on you know, BuzzFeed Reviews and a whole bunch of these different brands that we're building. And this is where our advertisers are able to tap into all of them. Um, you could choose just to run on Tasty, or you could target the Tasty audience across all. So we're really excited. It's something that um, we've been wanting to bring out for a while and get our clients really comfortable with the way that they can buy and see everything across one place. Dan, I appreciate the time today. Cool. Really exciting what you guys are doing on both the content side, also the advertising side. Cool. Uh, I guess only a year in and you've got all this stuff going on, so it's gonna be fun to see what the next year holds. Yeah, we're and, excited. Uh, appreciate the time.